This video is brought to you by Star Laboratory. If you are not a subscriber, first of all, please subscribe our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Hi everyone, today we are going to discuss about the Jurin Analysis Chapter 3. As we discussed earlier in this survey, Turin Analysis, we are going to include two types of analytes. So what are they? So first one, Microscopical Analysis. And the second one is the microscopical analysis. This uh, microscopical analysis uh, is going to include cells, crystals, amorphous materials and the cast. If we take the microscopical analysis, again we are going to subcategory into two groups. So that is uh, physical and chemical analysis. So if we take this uh, physical analysis, we are going to include the uh, eight parameters that is color, appearance, pH, specific gravity, viscosity, froth forming, volume and the order of the Jurin sample. These physical analysis gives rough idea and they helps to diagnose the condition of the patients, right? So let's see one by one. So first one, color of the specimen, right? Actually, if we take the normal person, the normal color of the Jurin is actually pale yellow. So this color is uh, given by the Jurochrome and this uh, Jurochrome is made up of uh, Jurobilin urobilinogen and peptide substances, right? If we take this uh, urochrome, is a product of endogenous metabolism and under normal conditions, the body produces it at constant rate, right? The intensity of the yellow color in a fresh urine specimen can give a rough estimate of urine concentration. For example, if the specimen is pale yellow or colorless, it means it's diluted urine sample, right? If the specimen is in dark color, it means it's concentrated during specimen. Then the next thing is a very very important thing we are going to discuss, right? So these color changes actually helps a lot to diagnose the condition of the patient, right? So first one, if the patient's urine sample is seen in orange color, it may indicate the presence of bilirubin in the sample, right? Uh, for example, if the patient is having the jaundice, it's possible. Then the second one, if the patient's specimen is in yellow green color, it may due to the presence of bilirubin. So the possible condition is the jaundice, right? Then the third one, if the Juran sample is uh, present in greenish color, right? It may due to the pseudomonas infections. So due to the jutia, that means urinary tract infection. If it is uh, caused by the pseudomonas, actually this uh, pseudomonas bacteria produce uh, this uh, greenish color pigment, right? So that's why the patient's uh, urine sample may be in greenish color, right? Then the fourth one, uh, if the patient's specimen is seen in pinkish red or pink red color, it may due to the presence of RBC or hemoglobin, right? So here if it is uh, RBC presence, we call it as hematuria, and if it is hemoglobin presence, uh, we call it as hemoglobin urea. Then the second condition, it may due to the presence of myoglobin, right? So if it is myoglobin, we call it as myoglobin urea. Then the third condition is due to the dietary, right? Uh, if the patient is having more and more beetroot, it may present in the urine sample also, right? So the urine uh, may be seen in pinkish red color. But the thing is, it's a non-pathological condition. Then the fifth one, if the patient's uh, specimen is seen in purple color, it may be due to the porphyrin urea, right? Here the purple color is produced by the porphyrin presented in the urine sample, right? Then the sixth one. If the patient's specimen is seen in brownish black color, it may be due to the methemoglobin urea or alkaptone urea. If it is methemoglobin urea, the presence of methemoglobin in the urine sample, it gives brown black color, right? So if it is alkaptone urea, the presence of homeogenicity acid, actually it's a reducing substance which gives brown black color for the specimen. I think it's clear, right? So if you have any doubts or if you have any questions, please ask me in the comment option, right? So I will reply as much as possible, right? Then the second analyze is the appearance or clarity of the specimen, right? Actually the clarity is a general term that refers transparency or turbidity. Then the freshly voided normal urine is usually clear. This clarity or appearance also an important thing that we should mention in the reporting system, right? So let's see how we can report. So first thing, if the urine specimen of the patients is seen as transparent or no visible particulates, we mention as clear, right? So reporting we should mention as clear. Then the second thing, 
we mention as trace if it is few particles present and if the print easily seen right so what does it mean the printed easily seen right so don't make it confused so when we are testing we take out the urine specimen in a can tubes and we observe against a printed materials right so when we observe if it is no particles present in the sample uh, it's transparent so it will easily we can observe the printed materials so we mention as clear right so if it is a few particles present the print easily seen right but uh, we cannot uh, observe uh, more clearly but uh, we may observe uh, print easily right so that's why we mention as trace then the third one if it is a uh, many particles present of print blood we mention as cloudy or one plus right single plus we mention in the report right then uh, if the print cannot be seen through the urine sample we mention as stable or double plus then the fifth one if it is many particles present in the urine sample we mention as milky or triple plus right then the next thing we will discuss about the reasons for the urine turbidity Actually, this uh, urine turbidity may be due to two reasons. That's first one is non-pathological condition. Then the second one is the pathological condition. So, if we take the non-pathological condition, it may due to the squamous epithelial cells. Actually, the squamous epithelial cells is a normal cells can be presented in the urine sample at a constant rate. Then the second one, the presence of mucus also can be develop the turbidity of the specimen. Then the third one refrigerator specimen right so when we are refrigerating the sample sometimes the amoebas phosphates carbonates and amoebas durates may develop the uh, turbidity right so amoebas phosphates and carbonate can produce a white precipitate when due to the alkaline ph of urine at the same time if it is amoebas durates can produce a print bread dust like precipitate in acidic urine right then the fourth one in case of fecal contamination also can develop the turbidity that we all know then the presence of sperm or spermatozoa that are also possible to develop the turbidity then by using of talcum powder and vaginal creams also may cause the turbidity so these are the non pathological conditions so what are the pathological conditions that we can observe right so first one the presence of rbc or wbc that means white blood cells and red blood cells also can develop the turbidity then the second one the presence of bacteria presence of yeast also can develop the turbidity then the fourth one presence of non squamous epithelial cells so these are very important right so the presence of uh, squamous epithelial cells in a constant rate that's normal that's a non pathologic condition but if the presence of non squamous epithelial cells for example transitional epithelial cells renal tubular epithelial cells those are the abnormal epithelial cells so that's also can develop the turbidity then the next one the presence of abnormal crystals actually the uh, normal crystals also can develop some uh, amount of turbidity but it's very very important uh, that's in the presence of abnormal crystals uh, the development of turbidity that's uh, a uh, pathological condition then the presence of lip fluid and the presence of chyli crystals also can develop the turbidity of the patient's uh, urine specimen right then now let's uh, move to the third uh, microscopic analytes that's ph right in the human body along with the lungs the kidneys are the major regulators of the acid base balance in the body right so that's why mentioning of ph also an important thing in the reporting system a healthy individual usually produce a first morning specimen with slightly acidic ph right so the ph range should be 5 to 6 then the next thing the ph of a normal random sample can be in the range between 4.5 to 8 then the measurement of ph the measurement of ph can be done in the laboratory by using litmus paper or ph paper and the urine reagent dipstick technique also can be used to detect the ph in nowadays there are some conditions for the cause of acidic and alkaline urine for example if it is acidic urine it may due to the metabolic acidosis diabetic mellitus starvation dehydration diarrhea presence of acid producing bacteria for example e coli bacteria 
then the having of high protein and meat diet then the medicines so this may uh, cause the acidic urine if we take the alkaline urine it may due to the metabolic alkalosis hyperventilation vomiting then the presence of urea producing bacteria then having of high vegetarian diet then the old specimen so these are the major reasons for the cause of alkaline urine then the next analyte is the specific gravity of fuel right so the specific gravity is defined as the density of the solution compared with the density of the distilled water in a specific same temperature then the next one clinical significance of urine specific gravity first one monitoring patient hydration and dehydration second one monitor loss of renal tubular concentration ability third one monitor of diabetics fourth one determination of unsatisfactory specimen the specific gravity of a normal person urine sample can be in the range of 1.01 to 1.03 in the laboratory we can use the urinometer to measure the specific gravity then the second one we can also use the refractometer that's a advanced technology and the third one reagent dipstick technique also used to detect the specific gravity of urine then the fifth microscopical analyze is the volume of urine right so this uh, volume of urine depends on the amount of water that kidney excrete water is the major constituent so therefore the amount of water excretion determined by the body state of hydration if we take the factors that influence in urine volume first one the amount of fluid intake then the second one fluid loss from other body parts for example sweating and etc third one antidiuretic hormone adh hormone or vasopressin hormone normal daily urine output is usually 1200 ml to 1500 ml but the volume of 600 ml to 2000 ml is considered as a normal condition 24 hours urine volume can be changed according to some disease condition for example in case of anuria the total urine volume can be reduced to 100 ml or less than 100 ml per day in case of oliguria condition 24 hours urine sample or specimen can be reduced to 400 ml or less than 400 ml per day in case of polyuric condition the patient urine sample can be increased to 2 liters or more than 2 liters per day then now let's discuss about the conditions of polyuria and oliguria conditions if we take the polyuria the disease conditions like diabetics polycystic kidney disease ckd that means chronic kidney disease chronic liver disease and the intravenous infusions causes the polyuric condition then if we take the oliguria chronic dehydration diarrhea excessive sweating severe burns vomiting obstruction in urinary tract acute renal failure are the causes for the oliguria then the sixth macroscopical analyte is the odor normal odor is aromatic and it's seldom of clinical significance and it is not a part of routine urine analysis urine odor is a noticeable physical property then now let's discuss about the clinical conditions for the different types of odor right so if we feel the aromatic uh, that is normal as we all know then if we uh, smell the ammonia like smell that uh, may due to the bacterial decomposition may be uh, due to urea that means urinary tract infection if you feel fruity or sweet smell it uh, indicates the presence of heat on bodies if you feel the marble syrup uh, smell that indicates the marble syrup disease then if you feel the mouse smell that indicates the presence of penile ketone urea so that's all i think it's clear so if you are having any doubts or if you have any questions please ask me in the comment option right After watching this video please give a like leave your comments and share it to your friends if you are not a subscriber first of all please subscribe our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon thank you